Hello, family. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You're a beautiful bunch. We're so excited to be with you. There's no one more worthy than Jesus. Um, I feel very aware in this moment of honoring all of the different circumstances and seasons that you're coming from. All the things going on in every heart that only Jesus knows. But there's one song that everyone can sing and it's the song of the Lamb and of his great worth. So let's just close our eyes. I want you to close your eyes and lift your hands in this, in this place. And we, Jesus, we've come, we've come for you. Jesus, we've come to gather around you, to sing of your great worth and your unmatched beauty <laughs> and to be changed forever as we behold your precious lamb of glory who was slain before the foundation of the world and we honor you we honor you in this place We present ourselves as living sacrifices. We look at the lamb and we remember your suffering for us, Jesus. We pray that you would set our faces like flints this, this weekend, that we would have eyes to behold the beauty of Jesus and be changed forever by your majesty, by your matchless worth, and that we would bring you the honor that you are worthy of, that we would bring you the offering that oh, you have longed for, Jesus. Oh. We thank you that this group of people will never be together in one place until the other side. And so, Jesus, we pray that a fragrance would go up before you. We pray that a fragrance would go up before you. You've never, you've never breathed in before. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how we love you. Tell him you love him tonight. Just lift your voices. How we love you, Jesus. How we love you, Jesus. There's never been another like Jesus. Oh, there's never been another like you. And we worship you in this place. We build you an altar. May the Lamb receive the reward of His suffering in full. Amen, amen, amen.
Cause you turn my morning into dancing You turn my night into day I put on all my heaviness in. I put on the garment of praise Cause you turn my morning into dancing You turn my night into day
fix our eyes on you tonight We drink you in We behold you now You are so beautiful You are so wonderful You are all that we want You are all that we need You are all that we want, Lord We desire, we desire to know you more We desire to know you more Give us today our daily bread Give us today, Lord, our daily bread
just intercede tonight <laughs> lift your voice we ask for the glory we ask for the glory of the Lord to cover the earth to cover the earth we ask for knowledge the knowledge and revelation of the Lord to cover the earth to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea I pray from this room from every heart there would be release of the knowledge and the glory of the living God that Holy Spirit you would come upon these that are gathered here Oh, tongues of fire, revelation, knowledge, eyes that can see and ears that can hear, Lord. Oh, release your glory through them.
Let your kingdom come. 
voice. Lift your voice. Pray in the Spirit. Bless in the Spirit. We give you mighty praise, Messiah, great King, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world.
want you to give the mighty King of glory, the God-man who is crucified in flesh, risen from the dead. Give Him mighty praise tonight. The Lord is risen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you thank our worship team? Give praise to Jesus for their service, their loving service and sacrifice to God. You can go back to your seats. If you're watching us at home, I'm sure the glory of the Lord is just bursting through your screen. Thank you, Jesus. I get the honor tonight of a uh, taking up the offering to the Lord. There was four people who were excited about that. I'm gonna say that again. I get the honor of taking up the offering. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> How many of you understand you can love God with your praise and with your mouth and with your hands, but you can also love God with your finances? I'll just give you 30 seconds to get back to your seat. If you're watching at home, I'd encourage you to get the Scriptures out and get ready for tonight as well, because this is gonna be a very, very deep evening. If you would, turn your Bible. Oh my goodness, I, just, I can feel the holiness of Jesus right here. I can just feel the holiness of the Lord. Man, my goodness, God, you're so good. I wanna highlight something very peculiar when I saw this. I was like, wow, this is amazing. It really shocked me when I saw this verse. Would you open your Bible to Luke chapter three? Luke chapter three. Open your iPhone Bible, or if you're still in sin and you have a Samsung, you can open that as well. <laughs> I'm just joking. Open to Luke chapter three. I wanna do something that I would never regularly do because I honor so much Michael and Jessica and and uh, I try to really keep on point when I'm doing things like this, but I wanna say happy birthday to Theo Kalianos. <laughs> I know he'll love that so much. Um, would you open your Bible to John 3, uh, sorry, Luke 3. The very first repentance message in the New Testament happens here. We all know about this. We know about John the Baptist. He was called to prepare the way. We recognize that when everybody came out to him, he was preaching the message of repentance. We all know that. But what I never knew is what I saw here recently as I was studying this. Let's start at verse 10. So people asked him saying, what shall we do then? This is in response to him preaching, you need to repent. And they said to him, what shall we do then? And he answered and said to them, he who has two tunics, this is the strangest thing. He starts with material things. He who has two tunics, let him give to the one who has none. Then he changes the subject. He who has food, again, material things, let him do likewise. Verse 12, then the tax collectors, they piped up and they said to him, what do we need to do? Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than what is appointed to you. Again, he speaks about material things. Verse 13, as if this wasn't enough yet, 14, sorry. Likewise, then the soldiers came to him saying, and what shall we do? So he said to them, do not intimidate anyone or accuse anyone falsely. And once again, he says, be content with your wages. Five times here in the first New Testament repentance service, God highlights material things and money. Why? 
why would John be called by God to say, if you really wanna repent, let go of your control of things? Why would he do this? Let me just propose something to you. The way to receive God, obviously we know God is greater than our money, but there is nothing in our life that controls us more than our own finances. In fact, it's the only area of your life that you have complete control over. Whatever's in your pocket is under your dominion. You can do anything you want with it. You can't control somebody else's emotion. You can't control how others see you. You can't control the weather. You can with a bit of authority sometimes. But in general, there is no area of life that you have sovereign control over except your money. And Jesus said this statement. He said, if man loves mammon, he cannot love God. So the first sentence of repentance in the New Testament was, make sure that Jesus is Lord over money. Or let's say it this way. John comes to prepare the way so we receive Jesus in our heart. I believe that tonight when we give to God, when these, these uh, soldiers and these tax collectors started to give to God, the letting go of trust in money prepares our heart to receive the Messiah. Because that's exactly what happened here. Their heart was rent. They started to give half their wages away. They started to give their one cloak, their two cloaks turned into one. They, they lost the trust in material things and instead they gave it as an offering to God and it prepared their heart to receive the Messiah. Very strange that the first repentance service wasn't go and fix relationships. Go and make sure that you've done the right thing by everybody. The first service to receive the way of the Lord was make sure that money is not your Lord. Jesus is Lord. And then right after this, Jesus comes down and John baptizes him. And then out of that time, then the Spirit of the Lord came on the Lord. You know what happened? He went into the wilderness, he came out of the wilderness and all of a sudden he's anointed with the Spirit and power and many are receiving him. And I'm sure many that ask the question, what can I do? How do I truly enter into knowing Jesus? Many who asked that question that day started to give away their cloaks and tunics. So what I'm asking you tonight is really, John's asking us, what controls us? What hinders us from receiving the fullness of the Messiah? And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it's our material things that we trust in far more than we trust in God. If you remember the very first thing that happened when Jesus was born, these three men came to Jesus, these kings, they came to the Lord and they brought to His feet and the feet of Mary and Joseph, they bought, they didn't bring and say, hey, here is a lifetime subscription to the best hotel in Jerusalem. They didn't come and say, hey, here is, is some favour with kings in foreign lands. They came and they brought to Jesus precious gifts. They brought to Him an offering that cost them something. This is the very first time that He appears in front of flesh and the first thing that happens is there's an extravagant offering. Why? Because He's worthy. Because always He was gonna be the Lord over finances. Always He was gonna be the Lord over humanity. Always He was meant to be the Lord, the one who supplies your needs, not money. Jesus is the supply. And so John did the same thing. He said, don't put your trust in your coats. Don't put your trust in your bank account. Give half of it away, give all of it away. Give something precious, prepare your heart for the Lord. And they did. I'm reminded of something that happened to me when I was standing in front of about 20,000 people. I was, uh, I was in a big stadium event that we were leading and, and um, I was just given to the whole thing. You know, I'm just sort of a bit zealous as a person and, and I was just given to it. Like God save people tonight and, and I was watching the crowd and, and I was given to all the details. The worship needs to be this way, go this way. Let's adore the Lord this way. I was fully in and I was in the midst of around 20,000 people and I was standing right there next to the stage and watching the crowd and all of a sudden on the left-hand side of me, I felt this very, very heavy presence. And I knew immediately when I felt it, I was like, oh, oh, I knew. I was like, Lord, and I knew He was right there. And this is what Jesus said to me. He said, don't lose me in the 20,000. Don't lose me in this big thing. You know, I realized looking at it now, I missed a moment to give Him an offering. I missed a moment to be extravagant. I missed a moment to, to more fully trust and love and extravagantly bless Him than what was going on around me. And we need to do the same tonight. 
We need to forget what's going on in our finances. We need to forget what's happening in our, in our bank. And we need to say, Jesus, I've come to this place. I've come to you, Lamb of God. I'm here and I give my life, but I'll give anything you tell me to give. I'll give you an extravagant offering. And for me personally, it's easy for me to go, praise your Father, that's easy. He's worthy of praise. But it's another thing to, to put my hands in my pocket and say, I'll praise you however you like with this. I'll praise you with an offering that costs me something. So tonight I invite you with John the Baptist into a moment of sweet repentance and into a moment of giving him a costly offering. And perhaps for some of you that costly offering is a hundred bucks or perhaps it's five bucks for others, perhaps it's 50,000 for somebody. It doesn't matter the, the, the dollar figure. What matters is you hear from your heart and you follow the value of the Spirit in you, not the value of how much you have in your bank. And this event for me, I've been here many, many years with Pastor Jessica and Mike. Jessica and Mike. For many years, they're very precious friends, the whole team, and I have had such deep encounters. I remember right there on the side there, Benny Hinn prayed for us, and I remember right down on the side there at the end of Jesus, I think it was Jesus 19, I remember weeping uncontrollably, and God rent something in my heart that was still holding on to me. And this explosive joy was on me all night because I realized finally I surrendered a deeper part of myself. And to me, that's priceless. To me, that's worth anything. To me, I'd be like, God, if He says give 10,000, I'm like, yes, Lord, I will. Because I changed under your hand. I will not be motivated and moved by finances. I'll repent for my control and my trust in that. I wanna fully trust you. I wanna give you something extravagant. And I believe the Lord is worthy tonight of something extravagant because of how much He's given us on the cross. I could do an offering message like this and just say, Jesus died on the cross. He gave, so give. It would be that simple. But for some reason we need more convincing because we have a lot of control and a lot of trust in money. Let's listen to John the Baptist tonight. Let's repent. Let's give Jesus a costly offering. I bet you never thought you'd hear a repentance offering message. <laughs> that guy told me to repent. <laughs> yes, repent and give. Now, for those of you who don't trust money and you don't wanna repent, that's wonderful. You can just give out of the abundance of your heart. <laughs> but for those of you who've made an idol out of finances, tonight you can kill the idol. Tonight you can put the Lamb of God back on the throne of your finances. Praise the Lord. Would you close your eyes? I wanna pray for you. King Jesus, I ask you that you would pay for your own event, Lord. I know, Father, that this exalts the Lamb. And I know, Lord God, that you will pay for this because of all that it does through the hearts of people. I ask you to bless every person here and I ask you to give them the courage tonight to follow your voice. And now ask the Spirit, what should I give? Ask the Spirit, what should I give? What should I give? As the Lord begins to talk to you, you can come out of that and you can Look at the QR code here. You can come out of it if the Lord's spoken to you. You can scan the QR codes right there on the side of the screens. There's other people running around. There's ushers everywhere. You can, there they are with buckets. If you need credit card slips, see they're putting up their slips right there. If you need that, just put your hand up. They'll give one to you straight away. They're right there, they're everywhere. That's wonderful. So just put your hand up if you're like, yep, I need a credit card slip. I need a donation slip. If you've heard the Lord. Now, if you didn't hear the Lord, some people do this. They say, I didn't hear a figure. Well, the Bible says then, give out of the abundance of your heart. So you can choose. There was only one tree in the garden. God said, don't eat that. The rest, choices. So you can choose tonight. You can go, I choose to give this. So if you need a slip, place your hand up high. They're gonna come to you right now. And the buckets are coming around and the QR codes are on both sides of the screens. And then we're gonna go to a video. And for those of you online, you can give as well. We would love you to sow into what the Lord's doing. I'm sure Jesus is touching you at home. So we're gonna go to a video and we're gonna see how you can give. God bless you. I pray the Lord multiplies this and I pray Jesus becomes the King of your finances. Amen.
we just begin praying in the spirit out loud just for a few just for a minute come on just lift your voices to the Lord now just just keep praying out loud blessed be your name Lord Begin singing in the spirit all over the place. Holy, 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 holy. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your voices a little more. For the next 30 seconds, can we close our eyes, just lift our hands, 
Just forget about everything and minister to the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Just keep worshiping. Blessed be your name. Can we lift our hands to heaven together? Holy Father, tonight we've come in the name of Jesus, your holy child, the name that is above every name, the most majestic and holy name there is, the name of Jesus. Can we put his name on our lips tonight? Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Lord, We enter by the blood again, and we plead the blood tonight over every square inch of this property. Receive our worship tonight, Lord, and come and fill this house with your glory. Soften our hearts. Mold us, Lord. We thank you tonight for the blood. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the promise of your word that you honor above your own name. And we sit like little children tonight, hungry. Just lift your hands to heaven. And we say, speak, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. May our hearts be soft and receptive as we receive your holy word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, our deepest prayers that you would receive all the glory, all of it, all the glory. All the glory is yours forever and ever. And God's people said, can we lift the praise and seal that? Can we do that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask you to remain standing. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome all of you to Jesus 23. This is our 10th year in a row, and uh, it's such an honor to be with you. So many friends and uh, so much family here from around the world. And also, can we please thank our worship team and our choir for serving so beautifully. Uh, this will be the greatest Jesus gathering we've ever had, in Jesus' name. We say amen. And it's nice to be back inside. <laughs> yeah, we're all rejoicing, especially our team. Well, as we remain standing, uh, as I introduce our speaker uh, for the night, it is such a privilege to even say that I know Brother Yoon. He is, um, yeah, he is a true father. Uh, in the church who has suffered greatly for the cause of Christ, years imprisoned in communist China, tortured on a daily basis, kept his testimony and is more in love with Jesus than ever. And I, I want us to all sit and receive. The Bible teaches us to give honor to whom honor is due. Unfortunately, this generation is being trained in dishonor. May the church be seen differently. May our hearts beat differently. Can we please welcome uh, a dear friend and father in the nations, Brother Yoon.
在我身边要给我翻译的是我的儿子。我为了福音的缘故，在监牢的时候他出生了。So this is my beloved son. He is translating,、uh, translating for me, and、uh, God gave me a son while I was in prison. 呃，我给他起个名字叫伊萨，神就告诉我说，伊萨会给这个时代带来阳光。在这块土地上，这块土地上会日增月盛，成为一个大户的人家。I was sitting in the prison, and the Lord told me, "I give you a son." I kneel down on the ground and ask the Lord, "Lord, which name should I name my son?" The Lord told me, "Isaac, because he is going to bring hope to this generation." 我现在请我的儿子给大家一点话语。对我感受到有一件事情，上帝对我儿子有一个呼召，不是老爸讲一句，他跟着重复一句。我感受到神给他有话语，他可你可以勇敢地讲。So my son is translating for me in the last twenty years into German. So today he's here translating in English, and he has also a word and greeting word to you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Pastor Michael, Pastor Jessica, four years ago, you gave me the permission to stand here to bring a short greeting, a word from China. Today, I'm, we are back. I'm standing here again. Just two weeks ago, we had a secret Chinese underground leader meeting in the south part of Asia, and、uh, 40 main pastors and leaders made it way, and it was a miracle. So they can come out and gather together for four, five,、uh, four, five days. We were crying together, laughing together, unstoppable,、um, sharing, and testimony, and、uh, re rejoicing in the Lord. So, and、uh, here we are, and bring you lovely, lovely greeting from the church, the body of Christ,、uh, the underground church in China, and.、Um, Last Sunday was、uh, Pastor Benny's, Benny's birthday. We spoke to him, and he said his desire is to to come to China one day to preach the gospel there. And I think this is also a prayer request for all of us, all of us, to pray for Pastor Benny、uh, for the open door in China. And、um, and also bring your lovely greeting from the pastors and leaders from Iran. And they just sent me a greeting, and they told me many, many of Iranian Christians they are listening to Jesus' image worship and your sermon.、Mm. One one pastor he made he made this to this live ministry. He translated a lot of the YouTube videos into Farsi and put subtitle on there. So the people in Iran who can understand English, they can follow and receiving. And、um, the many leaders and the pastors from from Iran, they said, "This is our pastor, Pastor Michael. Even he didn't know us, and we don't know him, but he is pastoring us so well. Thank you so much." Mm. Mm. The underground church in China is still growing, and、uh, the persecution in China is very, very heavy. And most of the most of the pastors they、uh, they can get out, and、uh, the most meetings they have five to maybe 15 people, the largest meeting, and they are gathering in in buses in、uh, in different places, and they have to hide themselves. And、uh, we were asking the pastors, "How is your underground church uh, 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 doing?" And they said, "The church is doing very well." And they keep asking us for for sending them testimonies and、uh, stories and books about the missionaries who paid a high price from from United States, from Europe, who come to China, come to the dirt world of country, and.、Uh, 
and being a seed to bury into the ground and giving, giving their life as a seed to bring many, many fruits. And they're asking us to give them all these stories, to be encouraged to follow the example of your forefathers, to preach in the gospel, or pay, or paying the price, but also to receiving the reward in heaven. And there's one message they want me to bring, bring to you, to the Church of America, Church in the West End. And our God is faithful. He's still sitting on the throne, and He's the King. And uh, even sometimes we can feel the presence of God. Like in China, like in Iran. We also have uh, co-workers two, two weeks ago, and uh, the family members, they, they preached the gospel in North Korea, and they have been killed. But the uh, rest of the family members, they are still joyful and peaceful and preaching the gospel. We were crying, and we were sharing and encouraging each other to continue, continue to preach the gospel until he called us home. And um, there's a message they told me to bring you. Maybe the someday, some days will come to our life. We can see the sun, sunlight. We can see the hope. We can feel the tingling presence of God, the weight of his glory in our meetings, in our prayer lives. But God is still there. And if you are walking through darkness, keep walking in the darkness. Keep walking and keep holding fast to Jesus. Keep laying on Jesus Christ. Keep looking up to the Lamb of God. He's still there. He's the King of all nations. And the very last day of Apostle Paul, and he said, the Lord rescued me from all the evils, and he will bring me into his kingdom with his, his mighty power. And uh, the next day, and uh, he has been beheaded. But the grace of God was still there. The grace of God still brought him into his kingdom. The grace of God still rescued, rescued him from all the evils. And uh, beloved ones, may the Lord really um, encourage us and warn us to follow him, especially in this generation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah. So I am your brother in the kingdom, in the suffering and in the patience of Jesus Christ. I'm your brother from China. As I was 16 years old, the Lord came to me in the very early morning. He called me clearly, Yun, stand up, go to the south, go to the west, and preach the gospel. In the last 49 years, I was following his call and preaching the gospel. Since I met Jesus, my mother said I was married. And after I received a call, I went from village to village in almost every city in China to preach the gospel. And my mom told me, my son, you got crazy. And the Chinese government said, this is a crazy and dangerous man. We have to put him into the prison. So for the glory of God, and uh, I, I had the honor to spend over 10 years in the Chinese prison. In the early years, I was crying out to God, God, now I'm a, I am here in a prison. I can't preach the gospel. I am so, I'm so sad. And the Lord taught me, this is your church, the prisoner. This is your Bible school, and this is your disciples. So I start to preach the gospel, and the prison becomes a Bible school. Hallelujah. 
。我要分享我的见证。我在这里离不开我一个熟龄的父亲彼得徐，今天也是我给他们主婚是二十八年的一个纪念日。呃，彼得徐牧师，能不能上来给弟兄姊妹来鼓励几句？所以，我非常感谢我的圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、圣父、你们美国在美国的时候，有个美国的格林汉·格佩里，他被称为是中国的格佩里。呃，这个是在香港报纸上，当他被关进监牢的时候说：“西方的格佩里住进宾馆，东方的格佩里关进监牢。”所以格格格林汉来见他的时候，他被关进了监牢里。The great man of God from the United States, Pastor Billy Graham. And uh, was here, and also in the nations was uh, preaching the gospel. And this is the Chinese Billy Billy Graham was is the father of the Chinese underground church. Uh, <laughs> 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 So Pastor Peter Xu, he's 85 years old, but he's still preaching the gospel every day. Hallelujah! Thank you. 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 And I know that our praise and our worship reaches to the throne room of heaven. Every time we have a meeting like this, my spirit is so full. As we sing the song of the Lamb of God, we sing the song of Moses. And the Lamb opens the book of life. And as through worship and praise, we open up our hearts to the Lord. I love to hear my brother Yun share with all of us. He had this saying that he would use when he was training workers in China. He said, We always must be ready to preach the gospel. We always must be ready to run and escape from the police. And we must always be ready to go to prison. And we must always be ready to die for the gospel. The Lord has forgiven all of our debts. And He has given us the honor and the responsibility to go and gather souls to fulfill the calling that He has put in His church. In the same way that Western missionaries went to China and sowed in blood, they went through persecution and difficulty. They put down deep roots. So that there could be much fruit. God has revived the church in China. And God gave the church in China a vision that they should carry the gospel back to Jerusalem. In 1995, under the leadership of Brother Yun, the churches in China came together to, fell, uh, to form the Cinema Unity Fellowship. Uh, this word Cinema comes from the book of Isaiah. 
where the Lord says, I will make the mountains into a highway. And I will make the level, make the way straight. And it says, look, they will come from afar. They'll come from the north. They'll come from the west. And they'll come from Sinem. And this is China or the East. So we all agreed with Brother Yun and we called it the Sinem Unity Fellowship. To send the gospel out of China back to Jerusalem. To complete and to fulfill the Great Commission. That the church in the east and the church in the west would come together and work as one body to fulfill the commission that the Lord has given to us. So I pray that all of us can come together, the east and the west, and work as one for the sake of God's great commission. That the gospel would continue its westward trajectory. Into Buddhist nations, into Hindu nations, into Muslim nations, into every part of the 1040 window, all the way back to Jerusalem, that the number of the Gentiles in the church would be fulfilled, and that all Israel would be saved. That the nations of this earth will become the nations of our Lord and our King. And He will reign forever and ever. He's the King of Kings, He's the Lord of Lords, He's the Prince of Peace. The government is going to rest on his shoulders. And in that day, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And we will, and we will stand before his throne of grace and we will receive our reward from him. And, and at that time when we formed the Sinem Fellowship we had a monthly meeting that was kept secret and in uh, 1997 <laughs> in uh, March uh, we were having a, one of these meetings in Zhenzhou and as we were meeting together the police came to our meeting and they said everybody put your hands up and I, I looked and I recognized the police officers <laughs> because I'd been arrested many times before. So I said, hi, it's good to see you again. Uh, and as I was speaking to them, they said, Mr. Xu, your phone is ringing. So I got my phone out and I answered it. And it, it was Brother Yoon calling me on the phone. And he said, uh, Pastor Peter, we're back from Beijing. He said, we'll be there in just a few minutes. I'm afraid in that moment I, I wasn't thinking fast enough. And I owe my brother an apology. If I had been a little bit smarter, I would have said, ah, it's not a good time. Don't come right now. <laughs> but I was just stuck. I just said, ah. Uh. And, and in that moment, the uh, police officer took my phone from me. And, and many, many years later, I saw my brother Yun in, in America. And I apologized to him. I said, I'm sorry, I was so stupid in that moment. And, and uh, Brother Yun said, don't worry about it, the Lord is in control of these things. But as, as, as I uh, answered the phone, I didn't realize it was you. Uh, and I didn't know who was speaking. And uh, uh, because the police officer had taken it and said, yeah, come on over. And so Brother Yoon came to the meeting. And, and they had surrounded us. And they, when Brother Yoon came in, they said, put your hands up. And Brother Yoon put his hands up. 
And uh, they said, take off your belt. Uh, because if your belt's off, your pants are too loose to run away. <laughs> so he, uh, he was holding on to his pants with one hand. And he was kind of uh, moving slowly. And he moved next to the window. And the police officer said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and then Brother Yun jumped out the window. <laughs> We were on the second story and he jumped out the window. Uh, but he, he jumped right into the middle of another circle of policemen who were waiting for him. And he was arrested. And uh, they began to interrogate me. They interrogated me all night long. They, uh, they used Kung Fu on me. And they told me, if you don't answer our questions, we're going to give you 10 red dawns. What's a red dawn? A red, a red dawn is when they interrogate you for 24 hours straight. And Brother Yu said, no big deal, I've had eight red dawns, nine red dawns, 13 red dawns. <laughs> Because for 13 days, Brother Yun and I went on a preaching tour where we preached the gospel constantly without any sleep for 13 days in a row. When the Holy Spirit's fire burns, you can keep going. <laughs> so they said, okay, one red dawn. And they put me in a, in a secret prison. When I was uh, placed into this secret prison, uh, I found there was Brother Yun and, and there was my wife who I had just married. And my heart was so heavy. And I thought, nobody knows where we are. Our families don't know where we are. Our, our co workers, our, our supporters overseas, nobody knows what's happened to us. And so they placed us in these small little cells, and I woke up early one morning and I was praying. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to release Brother Yun. And I said, Lord, these gates are iron. There's bars over the windows. How can this be? And the, the Spirit rebuked me. Why, aren't I the God of miracles? Why is it taking you so long to obey me? So I walked to the door of my prison and I took the door handle and I turned it and it opened. And I was so afraid. I said, why can I open my own door? So I closed it. And when I closed it, the Lord rebuked me again. Why don't you have any faith? So I walked back to the door and I turned it again and I opened it again. And I looked down the hallways and nobody was there. And so I said, I'll, I'll go to the restroom. I didn't need to use the restroom. But I thought, if I'm walking to the restroom, it'll seem like everything's normal. And when I got there, my heart was completely calm. And I went to Brother Yun's door. And when I tried his door and I turned it and I pushed it, the door opened. And, and Brother Yun was standing there leaning against the wall. And when he saw that the one opening the door wasn't a guard in the prison, but it was me, he looked me in the eyes. And I looked him in the eyes. And I said, God is releasing you. 
And Brother Yun has a very soft heart and sensitive spirit. And he's very respectful of his elders. And we were all in prison together. So I knew that he had received and accepted what I told him. So I left him there and I went back to my cell. And at that moment, the Spirit spoke to me again and said, The king's business, the, uh, he said, The king's business is urgent. This is a, a scripture from the book of Esther. So I, I opened my door again and I went back to his cell and I opened it. There was, a, there was a space in his door about this wide, so I pushed his door open and the cell was empty. And my heart began to race. And I knew that the Lord had set him free. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, watch over your servants. Watch over the one who's serving you. Every second, every minute is so critical now. It, what if the police uh, shoot him as he's trying to escape? And I began to pray desperately. And as I was praying, it began to rain very heavily outside. And in that moment, the Lord spoke to me. That I will cover you with snow as a covering. And my heart had so much peace. And I knew that if the police officers discovered he was missing, they would have to get all their rain gear on and, and the canines wouldn't be able to find his scent. And that's how the Lord sent Brother Yoon out of prison. I was there for three more years. And in the year 2000, I was released. And as I was released from prison, many brothers and sisters met me at the prison gate. And, and as I was coming out of prison, they said, uh, Brother Leo is calling you from Germany. Uh, but in, in prison, I had gotten used to the habit of, of never speaking out loud. Uh, for, for three years, I hadn't spoken hardly at all. So when they told me that, I thought, who do I know in Germany? <laughs> and in that moment, I realized, oh, it's Brother Yoon. He's gone out to Germany. And I gave thanks and praise to God that in one moment of his leading and in one moment of submission to his word that, that he worked a miracle and he sent Brother Yoon out like one of the stones that David used to slay Goliath. And he sent him out of prison. Sent him out of China. Sent him into Germany. Into Europe. And to here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God is a miracle working God. We give thanks to the American missionaries. We give thanks to the European missionaries. Through the seeds that they have sown. Now God is working miracles again. And he's working through the church in China. He's working through the church in America. Through the church in Europe. That through the miracle power of God, through God's gifts and His grace, we will continue to be His witnesses on the earth. Let us work together that the gospel would continue to go forth all the way back to Jerusalem to fulfill the Great Commission, to welcome the Lord back. Let us give our whole lives to this endeavor. I give thanks to God and I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
谢谢你，朋友，谢谢大哥，谢谢你，哈利路亚。神的羔羊，耶稣，二零二三 ，The Lamb of God, 2023. 预约期到无熏期五十天，我渴望我们这种敬拜、祷告、赞美、敬拜、祷告、赞美，我要看见美国、欧洲这个时代，包括中东，将会有一个新的一个改变。From Passover to Pentecost, there's 50 days, and the 50 days of worship, 50 days of hunger of God, and God changed the whole history. May the Lord really use the worship of this house and worship of this ministry and send fire to the nations in the revival. Hallelujah. I'm <laughs> here. 从主那里领受一个话语，就是不但是给华人，也是给我们西方人呐、啊。上个世纪，神借许我们白人把福音带给我们亚洲，这个时机，这个时代已经来临了。上帝要用黄羊，要配合白人一起同心合意，把天国的福音带进中东。I was telling the Chinese underground leaders, and uh, uh, today I also share this statement with all of us. We are so thankful as the spiritual children of your forefathers and uh, receiving the precious gospel. And uh, in the past, the, your, fa your forefathers come to our country and paying the price and preaching the gospel. And this generation is the generation of, of the Asia, of the third world countries, and the God is raising up the missionaries among the nations to stand up to being a partner of America, to being a partner of Europe, to, to all together, hand, hand in hand, to finish the Great Commission, to welcome His second coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> This gospel of the kingdom shall preach to all the nations. 过去这这几年来，我记得二零一九来到这个地方的时候，到二零二零年初的时候，神就告诉我一句话，就是说，引入犹太人那这群门徒们，耶稣的门徒因怕犹太人把门都关了，没有想到是每个人都戴上口罩。I still remember 2019, the end of 2019, I arrived in Orlando Airport, and one of the co-workers, he was telling me, and uh, the, the topic of the conference, immediately the Spirit of God told me, because of the fear of the Jewish Pharisee, the disciples closed their doors and gathered behind their wall, and the Lord went through the wall and uh, appeared himself to them. 当二零二一年麦克邀请我能够再一次一定要来到这里的时候，我感受到神的一件一件事情要临到欧洲。那个时候看到刚刚发生到民要开始攻打民，国要攻打国的时候，神放在我心中一句话语。云弟兄，你不需要再为他们哭了。你起来，要把你的油装满了油，你把你的油拿住，去高摩下一代的领袖。And the next year, I got invitation from Pastor Michael to preach here again, and I was asking the Lord, Lord, what's your word for this year? And the Lord told me clearly, why you want crying? Cry for the for for the corona, for the war, for the hunger, for the suffering of the nations, and like uh, like Samuel was crying for the king of Saul. Now stand up and take your horn, take your oil, and find the king David and ordain him and uh, and set him as the king to for that generation. 说这最近，我想全世界的新闻都在开始发生到一些国家，中东
之间的这些战争发生的时候，我跪在神的面前，我曾经进食大哭。神在告诉我一句话说：“被杀的羔羊。”他配拿书卷，配揭开书卷。他是犹大的狮子，现在起来就要吹着拿喊的时候，要不是哭，不是喊，要宣告被杀的羔羊，只有耶稣基督，还有他的十字架，才能够解决中东。Early this year, I received an invitation from Pastor Michael again to come here and speak to you. I immediately went, went down on my knees and said, "Lord, what's your word for this moment?" And the Lord told me, "Under all the glory to the Lamb of God who paid all the price for of,、uh, for us all. Now is the time to stop to crying. Now is the time to stop to mourning. Now is the time to stand up and take your horn and take your oil to find the David of this generation and ordain them, anoint them, and." Send them to the nations to preach the gospel. Now is the time to stand up, to clear, to declare the the name of the of the Lamb of God. We don't need to let outside people, even people who don't believe in Jesus, take them to the media, on the news, 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 就是耶稣基督的十字架，才能够让中东开始能够开始历史历代的冤仇才能够解除。Every morning, three o'clock, I woke up. I pray for the nations with all my people, and pray for Israel, pray for the Middle East, pray for the persecuted church. And the Lord again, again, He told me, stop to cry, stop to mourning. Stop to give up, and it's not about the information of the word of God. It's the revelation, and it's about the cross of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who solved all the problem of of our world. Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said, 天父需要有一群人用心灵。或诚实来敬拜他。今天晚上我看到大家在这里敬拜，全场上万人在这里一直在欢笑，在敬拜的时候，我真正看见天父的心是满意的。And this、uh, evening I was standing there, and after a few minutes, I was kneel down and said, "Lord, this is, this is, this worship really fulfill your heart with peace." And joy, Lord, this worship. Please use this worship to fulfill desire of the nations, and to lift up the nations to come to you and see the Lamb of God and see the cross. 路加福音上提到一件事情：魔鬼把耶稣带到一座最高的山上。带到最高的山上，把世界、世界的万国的荣华、富贵、权力都告诉，让耶稣看到以后说：“耶稣，这一切都是给我的，是交给我的，你知道。但是如果你来拜我一下，我把这全世界都给你，只要你来拜我。” In in the Gospel of Luke chapter four, we know the story. Satan and took Jesus to the highest mountain and show him. All the glory, all the riches, all the fames of all the nations, and Satan said to our Lord Jesus, "If you kneel down and bow, bow before me and worship me, all this has given to me. I will give all the glory to you." Jesus 没有否认撒旦说给他讲的话。我我反复在想，耶稣可能想着走着瞧。耶稣到最后被钉在十字架上了以后，耶稣说：“天上、地下，所有的权柄已经赐给我了，你们要去。”是万民做我的门徒。At that moment, I was guessing Jesus was laughing in his heart because he knew exactly all the power, all the glory, all the honor belongs to him alone. On the cross, he cry, he cry out, "It is finished!" And at that moment, he took he took back, he took all the glory, all the honor who was lost, and back in his hand, and he's telling to us, "Go to the name." In my power, in my authority. 
去传天国的福音，是万民做耶稣基督的门徒。有多少人今天晚上愿意回应耶稣在山上对我们这个呼召和使命 ？So, dear brothers and sisters, this is the word of God to you. God is calling you. All the power, all the riches, all the honor, all the glory belongs to the Lamb of God, Jesus only. He's crying out, "Who I can send to the nations? Who's willing to follow me? Who's willing to preach the precious gospel?" And you are here, and God is calling you. Hallelujah. 我知道你们中间，你们的敬拜可别亚敏教会啊，你们的敬拜都是最棒的。神在这个时代会给你们有很多天上来的、宝座上来的新歌。有有多少人愿意成为敬拜者？举一下手。And I was kneeled down on the first road. I was praying for the worship team, but at the same time, I was praying for all of you. So, Lord, may this kind of worship fulfill your heart, but so also lead our heart to into your glory. Lord, please go to the next level. Re, uh, re, uh, um, Set free and open the heaven gate and release the new songs and the new sound to everyone who is coming to this conference. Hallelujah! 有多少人你渴望成为主的门徒，是万膝向主跪拜，万口承认耶稣基督为主的人？你勇敢，你，你愿意来顺服主呼召的人，你可以和我一同站起来。So at the end, I want to ask all of you, who want to fulfill the desire of our Lord Jesus Christ? Every knee will be bow down before Him. Every tongue will confess in the universe there's only one living God. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you want, if you are willing to. To finish this great commission and to give your life and to do so, please sign up. Hallelujah! Don't be afraid. No price is too high. Only you can see the value. If you see it, Jesus is coming. May the Holy Spirit now open our inner eyes to see the value, to see the glory. And if we see Himself, we are willing to pay all the price, all the price of our life to honor this King Jesus, to follow Him as His disciples, to go to His, go to the nations and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Hello, everybody. Michael here. We're so excited. Jesus 23 is right around the corner. We're just a few days out. Thousands upon thousands will be coming to Orlando, Florida, to worship Jesus. To be healed by His precious hands, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to hear the gospel preached clearly on a daily basis, and for all of our lives to be changed in His presence. This will be our greatest gathering yet, both we believe spiritually and certainly in attendance. So, would you consider sowing a seed? The Lord will honor you. There is no greater place to put or to offer our resources than into. The hands of Jesus Himself. When we sow into the gospel, according to the words of the Apostle Paul, he writes, "He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully." This is the word of God. And so I want to encourage all of you: Would you do something today, right now, to stand with us? Maybe you're saying, "Hey, there's a there's a registration fee for Jesus 23." Why receive an offer? The registration fees don't even come close to covering the expenses for the venue, flying in all of the worship teams, the guest speakers, honoring them,、uh, the production—you、uh, name it. It is costing north of one million dollars, significantly. So, would you please do something today? Would you give to the Lord's work? And、uh, let me pray for you that the Lord would bless your life. Really use this offering to glorify His holy name. Jesus, thank you for your mercy, for your love, and your kindness. Thank you for all you've given us, Father. I ask you now to bless your people as they give to your work. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen, and Amen. You can use the QR code right there on the screen. 
uh, thank you for being a part of our Souls campaign. You can actually also use text to give if you like. God bless you. We'll see you soon, hopefully, at Jesus 23.